The first step that we want to achieve today is to have this button state equipped if the player right clicks on a weapon. And if the player right clicks on an item, we want this to say consume. For that, we need to know the type of the slot that the player just right clicked on. So let's go ahead and set that up. So go to your content drawer in the core folder UI, open up the item slot, go to your graph, and then now we're going to create a new variable. And this variable will be named as slot type. And this would be of type E underscore slot types. Let's make this instance editable and also expose on spawn compile and save. And let's create two more variables here. Number one, it would be the item info. And this would be s underscore item info. And another variable, and this would be weapon info. And this would be of type s weapon info. Let's make sure both of them are instance editable and expose on spawn. Now compile it and save it. Now the next thing that we need to do is to update our interface. So let's go to our interface, go to BPI UI, where we have the create context menu. Let's go ahead and set in the information for the slot type. This would be E underscore slot type. And also our S underscore item info. Make this of type item info. And another one for the weapon info. So this would be S underscore weapon info. And this would be of type S underscore weapon info. And now we can go ahead and compile and save this. And now we can close our BPI UI. On our on mouse button down function, in our create context, now we have a couple different options for us. I'm going to select all of this from get all widgets, move this out a little bit, drag in my slot type, and then do a get. And off of this, I'm going to do a switch function and connect this just like so. And now if it is a weapon, I'm going to connect it here and then set this slot type to weapon and then also get the weapon info and then plug it in here just like, like this. And I'm going to copy this whole thing and then paste it one more time down here. And if it is an item, set this slot type to item. And then instead of the weapon info, I'm going to send in the item info. Compile and save. And plug in the mouse position, just like it. That's all we're going to do here. Now we can go ahead and close our item slot. Now let's go back to our core folder, UI. Open up the backpack. And now we need to make a small change here. Let's go to our main function, where we are doing filter by all and initializing it where we have add weapons to inventory. When we open this function, you can see that we're breaking the weapons info and we're creating the widget slot. And then the slot type, we're going to set this to weapon. And then also the weapon info, I'm going to go ahead and drag it and connect it here just like so. Compile and save. And then now go back to the event graph and do the same thing for the item graph. The slot type, I'm going to set this to item and then drag in the S item info into the item info. Compile and save. Now back in, in our filter by guns, we need to do the same thing. If it is a gun, set the slot type to weapon and then get the S weapon info and then plug it into this weapon info. Uh, for filter by food, we need to set this uh, slot type to item. And then also set this, uh, there you go, S item info. We just want to drag it into this item info, just like so. And same thing for the medic. I'm going to drag this S item info into the item info and then also set this slot type to item. And quest will be the same thing here. Let's set this to item. And then also we're going to get this S item info and then plug it in here. Compile and save. In our context menu, we should have our slot type, S item info and weapon info. And we can actually send this information over to our context menu. So let's go ahead and prepare our context menu. So in our context menu, go to the graph and then create a new variable. And this would be our slot type. Make this E underscore slot types. Make this instance editable and expose on spawn. Next variable would be our item info. This would be S underscore item info. Instance editable and expose on spawn. 
And the next one, it's going to be our weapon info. We'll make this weapon underscore this weapon info. Instanced editable and expose on spawn. Now, when you compile and save back in the backpack main, if I right click on this uh, create context menu widget and then refresh, I should have the slot type item info and the weapon info. All I'm going to do is drag in the slot type into this slot type just like so. And the item info into this item info and the weapon info into the weapon info just like so. Now we can compile and save. So all of the information has been properly passed on to the context menu. So let's go back to our context menu. And now we need to change this equip name. So I'm going to make sure that this equip is a variable. And in game, I'm going to drag in the equip text and say get equip text. Drag in the slot type and say get slot type and off of this I'm going to do a select node and this select node is going to be pretty straightforward I'm going to drag off of this weapon and I'm going to search for make literal name and this I'm going to set this up as equip and then let's copy and paste this one more time and here I'm going to state it as consume for our item so when it's item it's going to say consume and when it's a weapon, it's going to say equip. Let me move this down a little. And in our equip text, we're going to drag off of this and say set text, the text in bracket, and then I'll connect this here just like so. And then also the return value here, we're going to go ahead and connect it like this. Now if I go ahead and press play, I can go over to the weapon, grab a weapon, and then also a bottle of water. And then now if I press tab, and if I right click on the weapon, it should say equip and drop. And if I right click on the bottle, it should say consume or drop. So it's great. So it's working fine. Now that we have our button properly named, let's go ahead and work on the functionality for the weapons first. I'm going to go into my designer, go ahead and select this button for the equip and then select on on click. And when this button is clicked, I want to do, I want to take the slot here and get the slot type and do a switch function. Now connect this to the on click. If the slot type is a weapon, then I want to send out a call for equip weapon. And if it is a item, then I want to send in a function for consume item. And so let's use interface to do that communication. So in our interfaces folder, let's create a new interface. Blueprint interface and name this BPI underscore equipment. The first function is going to be equip weapon. This is going to have an input. This would be our weapon info. S underscore weapon info would be the type of it. And then I'm also going to set this up as a category. The category is going to be BPI and then this straight line. And then this is going to be equipment. So BPI and the subcategory of equipment. And then now I'm going to add in a new function. And this function would be consume item. This is going to have another input as well. And this would be our item info. And this would be of type S item info. And let's set this to the same category as well, just like so. Now we can go ahead, compile, save, and then close this. In our context menu, we want to communicate this information to our player character because the player character is the one who's going to consume or equip. So we want to control all that functionality on the player character itself. So we want to right click and say, get player character. Drag off of this and we're going to call out the equip weapon and also drag off of this and say consume item. So I'm going to move them up and then for weapon, I'm going to connect the equip weapon. And if the slot type is an item, then we're going to go ahead and consume the item. Let me move this a little bit forward and then drag the item info into this as such. And then the weapon info into the weapon info on the equip weapon, just like so. And that's it for this functionality. Now let's go ahead and implement these functions. So in our third person, I'm going to go to my blueprints, third person character. First, let's go to the class settings and under the implemented interfaces, let's go ahead and add in our new equipment interface. The reason why I decided to take this equipment and add it into a category is because in our interfaces, we're getting uh, pretty large in size. So all of these different type of interfaces are kind of adding as one. So because I've added the category, now I have a category for BPI equipment and then I have the two items in here. And later on, I will go ahead and then I categorize the rest of them. So here where we have the consume item, I'm going to right click and implement this event and then also equip weapon. I'm going to implement this event. 
Let's work on the equip weapon and then we'll get to the consume item in a moment. So the equip weapon now we need to create a functionality in our backpack to remove this item from our backpack so that the player can actually equip it. So let's go to our backpack uh, component, right click on it and you can click on edit BPC backpack and this will open up the backpack for you. Let's create a new function. And this would be remove from backpack dash weapons. And this is going to take in the weapon info, which would be our structure. So S underscore weapon info. And now we're going to get our backpack struct and we're going to search to see if we can, if we have this weapon info, if we do, then we want to remove it. If we don't, then we, we don't do anything. So in our backpack struct, we're going to go through all of them by using the for each loop, connect the execution pin here. We're going to drag off of this array element and we're going to break the backpack and drag off of this weapons info and then we're going to break the weapons info as well. And same thing here. I'm going to drag this weapons info here and then I'm going to break it. Add in a reroute just to keep it tidy. And I'm going to check if this name equals to the name that we are trying to add or remove. It does it already exist. And we're checking it by the name because the name is the unique identifier of the weapon as we only have one of each type. And now I'm going to do the condition, a branch over here, just like so. And off of true, we want to get our backpack struct. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the index. Connect this to true. And the index would be off of our for each loop. This is the array index. So I'm just going to drag this over and connect it to the index, just like so. And here I'm going to do a return. This return is going to have a removed question mark, and this would be a Boolean. Check this Boolean to indicate that it was successfully removed. And off of completed, we want to now do the return again, and this would be set it to false. This is to indicate that that item doesn't exist in our backpack. And this is it. This is just a simple function to remove the item from our backpack. Now in our third person, we're going to drag in our backpack. And here we're going to call in the remove from backpack weapons function. Connect this weapon info and connect a branch to this removed. Now, if this was successfully removed off of true, we want to go ahead and first refresh our backpack to remove that item. So first I'm going to drag in the backpack UI reference here. And then off of this, we want to call in some sort of a function on directly on our actual backpack UI. So back in our BPI equipment, I'm going to add in a new interface function and I'm going to name this refresh backpack. This is going to take an input and this would be our backpack content. And this would be of type S underscore backpack and make this a type array. Compile and save. In our backpack main, we're going to go to our class settings and under implemented interfaces, we want to go ahead and add in our BPI equipment. I'm going to right click on this refresh backpack and then implement the event. And this event refresh backpack, I'm just going to drag it all the way to the top where I have on clicked an event construct. Here, I'm going to go ahead and drag in our uh, backpack content variable and then do a set and connect this here as such. And before I clear the container, I also want to make sure that my the sub context menu that we just have open which says equip or drop is also closed. So where I have clear all context, instead of having to call out a new interface function, I'm just going to create a custom event here and call this as clear context underscore local and connect this here just like that. Now back at the event refresh backpack, I'm going to call in the clear context local. And here I'm going to connect this to the clear all children or clear children from the item container and, and the rest of the function. So this way we're actually clearing and refreshing our inventory. And then also we're resetting our inventory with the new content after removing the weapon. Now back in our third person character, I'm going to call in refresh backpack. And here I can set this off of true. And then also I'm going to drag in the backpack and get the backpack struct and connect it here just like so. Now if I press play, 
if I go and pick up a weapon. Now, if I open the inventory, right click, and when I press equip, the weapon disappears from our backpack. Now, one thing I want you to know is that because this UI function is implemented on the backpack, and then we also have a direct reference to the backpack, we can call that interface function as if it's just a local event on the actual blueprint. So that's why this is not a message and it still functions. To make sure that this is completely functional, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a, what, two different weapons and then grab some items. Now, if I open up the inventory, right click on this and when I press equip on the AR, everything should shift over just like so. And same thing for the weapon. If I equip again, this should shift just like that. And that's it for the remove the item from the backpack function. Now we're going to move our weapon to the equipment side of the screen.